Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. What's going on? What's going on? We'll go. We'll get started here shortly. Discussion. Excuse me. About debt. Because that seems to be something that people are scared of. Peace. Peace. What's going on? Let's, let's have a real discussion about debt. And the misconceptions of debt. So we'll get started here in a, in a minute. Thank you for those who've already shared this. Let's share this with at least three to five people. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about something that's hard for a lot of people to discuss. And I'm looking at two different screens. So you guys forgive me. But we're going to talk about something that is very difficult to discuss. You know, uh, meet a lot of people who uh, what's going on, Queen, who who have a, a difficult time accepting what debt is. You know, people come to us all the time. Oh, man, that money is expensive. This, that and the third. And I'm starting to learn that people don't even really know the cost of money. We don't know the cost of money. And I want to talk to us about the cost of money. I want to talk to us about debt. I want to talk to us about these things that will continue to to keep people in a place, as I call it, financial ruin. People will continue to stay in financial ruin unless they understand these concepts. So come on in. We're going to have a real dialogue today. Shaky, what up? Come on in. Peace, Brian. What's going on? So I was having a dialogue. She was in a place of uh, she was she was in a state of being frantic. And let me explain. Let me give you some backstory here. So she was explaining to me that she got put in a very uh, uh, bad position. What up, though? I see Detroit is in the house. What up, Martin? Uh, she got put in a bad place financially. She went out and she thought she was doing something honorable. She went out and purchased a vehicle on her own a few months ago. Went out, purchased a vehicle. And uh, because of her lack of, of financial literacy, uh, she got jammed up in a bad deal. OK, she got jammed up in a bad deal. What up, Andre? And so she went to the dealership, purchased the automobile and she purchased. She drove off the lot, uh, of course, felt good, purchased her first brand new vehicle. It wasn't brand brand new, but it was new to her. And as I'm going through and, and, and kind of doing an analysis of and we're doing a breakdown of her her finance, her finances and her financial statement and where she's at because she ended up finding out she bought the strategy call with me and her interest rate on that vehicle was 25 percent. Let me say that again. Her interest rate on that vehicle. Thank you for the badges. Her interest rate was 25 percent on that auto loan. Now, a lot of people would probably say, man, I would never spend 25 percent on an auto loan. Well, you would if you didn't know any better. See, that's the thing, because people who aren't educated about this information, you can never say what you want or will not be willing to do, especially if you don't know any better. And she didn't know any better. She thought she was doing the right thing. She thought she was purchasing her first vehicle. But but that's not even the craziest part. Yes, two, five, 25 percent for an automobile, a depreciating asset. So. Here's how I even found out. She had reached out to us uh, probably almost a year ago. Uh, she will pay double if she lives the life of the loan. Absolutely. She reached out to us about a year ago and was considering going through our program to uh, to fund want to fund a business she had at the time. And when we talked to her about, uh, she should have asked questions. Most people don't. And when we talked to her about the cost of money, because when people hear, oh, uh, to fund my business using funding strategies or what I call creative financing, it's in the form of unsecured credit. And with unsecured credit, the interest rate, the average interest rate on a credit card, let's say you use a credit card or even a line of credit, that, that interest rate can be anywhere between 
uh, after the introductory 0% interest runs out, let's say the average interest rate is 17%. Okay. So let's say on the, on the revolving credit, she would have gotten, it would have been 17%. Okay. You guys just follow me. And she said that that was too expensive. She said the credit, the, the, the interest rate on the credit cards to grow her business was too expensive. And at the time we asked her what alternative did she have to go and get cheaper money? And she had none because she had no financials. Her business has zero collateral. Uh, she didn't have a P&L, didn't file taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So a year, uh, so a year ago, she didn't see the value of borrowing money to make money at, let's just say 17%. Okay. But she went and signed an auto loan at 25%. Okay. She went and saw, she, she went and got an auto loan at 25%, but she didn't see the value at, at leveraging her credit at 17%. Let me say that again, because I, I know sometimes we have to say things a couple times for something to register. What up, billions? She didn't see the value at leveraging her credit at 17%, because the money was unsecured. But she went in and got an auto loan for a secured loan where the interest rate was 25%. My credit is amazing because of you. Thank you. So here's something. So I started to do some research and, and, and I really, really started to dig in and think about the psychology of where we are and why we're so scared of debt. And I'm using that word on purpose. So they say, the less your income, the easier it is for you to go in debt. <laughs> Jay the Prince said it registered. The less, the less your income, the easier it is for you to go into debt. And I started to, to really dig deep because I've been reading a lot of books about psychology. And if you guys have been following me for any period of time, you know, I often talk about the way we think and changing your mindset. And people think changing your mindset is thinking positive. Thinking positive is not changing your mindset. Thinking positive or changing your mind, excuse me, changing your mindset is not thinking positive. You change your mindset by learning how to make different decisions. And you learn how to make different decisions by being, you have to learn how to analyze things. And when I say learning how to analyze, not saying being hyper analytical, but learning how to ask questions that make sense and sense. So on one breath, going back to this scenario, she didn't see the value of leveraging her credit at 17 percent to get some credit cards to grow her business. But. She did, but she saw the value in signing on the line to get an auto loan at 25%. Okay, so, so the psychology of this and with debt is and what I'm starting to learn. And, and, I, and I listen to a lot of the calls from my team, I listen to a lot of the calls that I have. Like, I go back and replay a lot of these calls, and then even dialogue that I have with people. And I'm starting to realize that there is a psychological component of why people put themselves in debt. I don't know. If she, <laughs> I hope she see it now. There's a psychological component of why people put themselves in debt. And it's because there is an emotional attachment to the debt that makes people feel good. Let me say that again. There is an emotional attachment to the debt that makes people feel good. See, it felt good for her to drive off the lot in a vehicle, regardless to how much it cost. It feels good when we swipe our credit card at the mall. It feels good to book a vacation. It feels good to be at that fine dine restaurant. It feels like... All of those things feel good to people as opposed to understanding the psychological 
component of why people are in these situations. Why would, so the reason it's hard for people to fathom that debt makes them money is because there is not an immediate instant gratification when I'm putting my money on the line for, a, for the purpose of investing. I actually have to sit back to see if it works. But sometimes it doesn't work because you don't work. So because there's not an immediate gratification, it's very difficult for people to make that type of connection. I'll give you another example. One day I was in a restaurant about four years ago. It was a fast food restaurant. Okay. I was grabbing probably some fries or something because I typically don't eat fast food. And I saw a guy working, dropping my fries and he had a designer belt on. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm telling myself, you mean to tell me that somebody who their whole check potentially went to a belt that you are wearing at a place where the average income outside of being a district manager is probably about $300 a week. And if the belt is real, you basically put two of your paychecks together to buy this belt. Because if you make $300 a week, that's not what you bring home. Again, we had a whole lesson about gross versus net income. And so we look at that situation and scenario and we're and, and, and I was like, so you mean to tell me you, you, you took two of your paychecks to wear a belt that unless you have your shirt tucked in, nobody's going to see it. And you work somewhere that you make $300 a week and no disrespect. And this is what I was saying to myself. And so. And then that's when it really dawned on me that there is an emotional attachment to debt when you can spend it for an instant gratification. So this is why people buy vehicles that they can't afford. This is why people want to live in high rises in the cities where they can't really afford. This is why when I put up a post last week about a woman who was making three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year she was in a she was in a mountain of debt a hundred and seventy thousand dollars in auto loans see the average interest rate for a, a, a for an auto loan with a credit score of 600 to 699 is 15 to 25 percent let me say that again the average interest rate on an auto loan with a credit score from 600 to 699 can be anywhere between 15 to 25 percent. On top of that, the average auto loan is seven hundred dollars a month. OK, so now if we break this down even more, let's break this down even further, because I'm trying to put this to to pe I'm trying to put this in the most layman terms. OK. I also did a little bit more research and they said the average salary. A.K.A. salary. That a, a person with a two year degree makes is forty six thousand one hundred and twenty four dollars. So the average person with a two year degree makes twenty forty six thousand one hundred and twenty four dollars. OK, so when I went to do some math and remember, that's that, that's that's gross. That's not even net. So if the average car note is seven hundred dollars a month, that's eighty four. Uh, that's eighty four hundred dollars a, 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 a year. So. A person. Who has an average salary of forty six thousand dollars a year who average car note is $700 a month is spending almost a quarter of their salary on an auto loan, on a depreciating asset because it made them feel good. They didn't go into the dealership with the, with the, with the plan. They didn't go into the dealership 
already with their own finance. Like this is why we have to learn about financial literacy because the lack of it impacts every single area of our, of our life. So because people have an emotional attachment to spending debt or creating debt, which typically the lesser your income, the more you put your, the more you have an emotional attachment to debt. Bad debt though. Let me put it that way. See, the more money in, for some of my uh, uh, business partners and people who I've met, the more money you make, you actually spend less a lot of the times. Like, when, when we know we can buy what we want, we spend less because there's not an emotional attachment. We're not trying to make people, we're not trying to have people, we, we don't try to create an illusion to look richer than we are. So when I buy a vehicle, it's because I've already calculated my ROI on that vehicle and all of my vehicles make me money. So I'm not buying it because of the emotional attachment. I'm buying it because I've already calculated the, the, the ROI to where nine times, 10 times out of 10, I'm driving this vehicle for free. So let's swing the pendulum over here. What up, Derek? To, 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 to really understanding why is it so difficult for people to grasp the concept of debt making money. And here's what I started to learn. Going back to the psychology of how we've been conditioned to, to, to look at money. First of all, we've been taught that poverty is okay because anytime we get in at the table, we don't want to talk about money. Shh, don't, don't talk about that. But we'll talk about the new cars we bought, the vacations we went on. Like we'll talk about the, the emotional part of the unstructured debt. But if I talk to people about how to take debt to make money, then, I, then I'm a scam artist. But see, here's what I started to learn. I started to learn that the reason people are in these financial pitfalls, these financial ruins, is because we are we we have not been conditioned to understand that money can make you money. See, we've only been taught one way and we've been taught that you're supposed to work for money. So because we've only been taught this poverty mindset to work for money, then we only have a poverty mindset to debt. So now there's an emotional attachment to everything we do when it comes to finances. What is the ROI on those things, except the emotional portion of swiping the card or making that purchase. We don't, we haven't even normalized that debt is how you make money. So how is it? So here's my question. How is it on one hand, we're scared of debt, but the, the lesser, the less money people make, they put themselves in more debt. Somebody please help me understand that question. How is, again, let me say this again. How is it that on one hand, we're scared of debt that has been proven to make you money, but when it comes time to being a consumer, that is the only type of debt that we want to participate in. The average American has $90,460 worth of debt. The average American, $90,000 of debt. Which based upon the average salary, the average person will never outpace that debt. But not knowing I can go to the I can go through our funding program, get some of the vehicle you drive, but find a vehicle that will make me money, that one that will outpace the, 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 the APR of that debt and make me a return on my money. But here's why it's so hard for people to understand. They don't know how to handle debt. 
is is bigger than not knowing. That's not true. That's partially true. When we say people don't know how to handle debt, it's that people have an emotional attachment to bad debt. That's what it is. People have an emotional attachment to bad debt. This is why you have this is why terms like uh, retail therapy have been coined. We've coined terms to make it OK and it makes it sound cute. Oh, I have re it's retail therapy. That right there alone. Think about the psychology of that. That right there alone tells you there's a psych, there's a psychological connection to going and spending debt. The bad way. But see, here's the thing. It's hard for people to fathom that debt makes you money or you can use money to make money because we've only been taught to go to work for money. Most people don't even believe that they can be rich or wealthy. Let me say that again. The average person don't even think it's possible. Because if it was, there wouldn't be an emotional attachment to, to, to knowing that th this is a proven concept that debt has made millionaires. I can go and buy a business and do what's called seller finance, where, where the seller will finance the business to me, which means he or she is holding the, the paper. And I can now take over a business where it probably costs me little to nothing out of my pocket. And now I have a business that is making me money to where I'm able to service the debt and put some money in my pocket. But see, here's here, here's why. Here, here's the hard part for people. If the business doesn't make them a million dollars, they don't think it's a profit. See, I, I, I heard something. I think uh, I heard this on EYL the other day. When we everybody's seen that social media post when they say, would you rather have five hundred thousand dollars or sit down with a billionaire or a millionaire? And most people would say, oh, well, um. Uh, I would take the five thousand, the five hundred thousand, or whatever the case may be. Or I would like most people aren't even qualified to answer that question because they've never seen five hundred thousand. The average person has never seen a hundred thousand. And I say that to say, even when we look at debt, how can we say that? Oh, I'm scared of debt when you've never been a when you've never had a strategy that has taught you about debt. Same thing with business. The average person with doesn't even know what a real what a what a great ROI looks like when your money is being invested. So when I say people are scared to put their money to start a business or excuse me to buy a business because we don't start businesses, we teach people how to buy them. Shout out to Derek Harper if he's still on here. I can take debt to go and buy something that's already making money. Same thing with real estate and, and, and people don't see that is the easiest way to make money. Been listening and taking action on things you've preached over years, changed my life. Thank you. Can you buy a piece of property with your business name? Absolutely. I only teach people how to buy property in their business name. So let me give you guys this breakdown again. Here's one of my business banks. I have several cards in here. Just a couple. So imagine I go out and get $100,000 worth of debt. Okay? $100,000 worth of debt. And I take that $100,000 worth of debt and I go and put it and I put 20% down even on the, I can put some, some businesses will allow you to put 20% down. Did you guys know that? So, so now I bought a house, I bought a business and that to service the debt on that hundred thousand, let's say it cost me, um, $2,000 a month. Okay. Let's say it cost me $2,000 a month. Now let's say I bought a business with that hundred thousand. Let's say that was a 20% down. 
okay, on a half a million dollar business for sale. That business is doing more than $2,000 a month in revenue. After expenses, let's say that business is netting me $25,000 a month, okay? After all expenses, let's say the business is netting $25,000 a month, a half a million dollar business, and it's netting $25,000 a month. Those are, no, let's, let's say $10,000 a month, excuse me. Let's say $10,000 it's netting, okay? Now, all I have to do is pay the $2,000 on that hundred grand. And if the, so I've already calculated that this business is profitable and I use debt to buy it. It services the debt and now I'm making $8,000 a month and I use debt to do all of that. But here's what, here's what, and, 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 and for some reason that's hard for people to fathom. Because we've been taught to go and work for our money and we've been taught that debt is bad. But then here's what we'll do. We'll be in a state of financial ruin. Inflation is kicking our ass. Bills are piling up. Our debt is high as ever. Student loan debt is high. And I'm going to go over some the average income for the degrees. And here's what we'll do. When I say the less your income, the more debt we pile on. We'll have so the person who has only been told to work for money, and not saying that working is bad, but this is the cycle that we've been taught. So you want to make more money. So and, and people ask me this question all the time. So you want to make more money, what do you do? You go back to school and get more debt. When the, the first debt you got when you went to school didn't get you out of the first round of debt you got. So you go back to school and get more debt to pile on more debt where the first round of debt from that school didn't get you out of the first round. So then we go and get that second round of school debt. Our job increases. And then what about the remaining 400K on the business? The seller is financing that debt. So whatever that dollar amount is, um, it's going to come out of your it's going to come out of your profits, which that comes out of the initial expenses. That's why I say you net 10,000 at the end of the month. OK, so now here's where the cycle continues. You went back to school, got more debt when the first round of school debt didn't help you. And then because your job status increased, even though your debt also increased, you go and get a, a, a better vehicle because you got to look you got to look richer. You go and uh, upgrade your house because you, you, you got to look richer in a, in a richer neighborhood. You got to take more extravagant vacations. So now your debt just keep piling up. All because you've only been taught the emotional connection with that debt. If I would, I, I, I promise you, if we were to do a survey, this one might get me kicked off. <laughs> if we were to do a survey, I can almost assure you that most people go to college and continue that cycle because of the emotional feeling that comes with going to college. See, I'm trying to break the cycle. Of 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 this emotional connection of things. Of 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 so here, here's the thing. I've asked people, why are you going back to school when it didn't work the first time? Well, because I want to be the first. Listen to that again. I've asked people, why are you going back to college when it didn't work the first time? And the response has been because I want to be the first. It, they didn't say because I have a plan that this particular degree is going to get me X amount of money. 
They didn't say that I've already calculated my ROI on this degree. They said, I want to be the first. That's an emotional response. So a lot of people go and stay in this cycle because of the emotional attachment to the debt. Why did you upgrade your car? Because I deserved it. I'm looking at two screens. Why did you buy a bigger house? Because I've worked so hard. This is why I challenge people when they use the word smart around me. I, I always challenge people. I tell you, what is smart? And people have equated smart to being able to memorize a bunch of facts. People will think just because someone can talk politics and, 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 and spout off the periodical table that they are smart. Let me tell you the definition of smart. Having or showing a quick witted intelligence. Having or showing a quick witted intelligence. And so when we think about the word intelligence, it breaks down to intel, information. So if you have all of this information, but you're still in this financial ruin that you can't seem to get out of, how is that smart? If you continue to make emotional decisions when it comes to your money and your debt, how are you smart? It's, it's based upon uh, Webster, Oxford <laughs> language dictionary. It's mathematically impossible. But because we've tied the emotional feeling to it. So how can we see that signing for an auto loan at 25 percent is OK and you're not scared of that debt? But I can show you which has been proven time and time again. That's why it's called a concept that if you take debt to go and make money through real estate, buying a business or whatever the case may be, you, you win every single time. You win every time. No one, no one who's done that strategy the right way has ever lost. Let me say that again. No one who has ever done that strategy the right way has never lost. Check this out. This blew my mind. I said the average debt for Americans is $90,000. For millennials age 24 to 39, it's about 87,000. For Gen Z, which is 18, age 18 to 23, the average debt is 16,000. And for Gen X, which the age group is 40 to 55, the average debt is one hundred and forty thousand dollars. So people aren't scared of debt. We can stop that right now. People aren't scared of debt. Because they like the emotional attachment that comes with piling up debt. But here's what people are scared of. If you want to know what people are really scared of, type the number one in the chat. I'm going to tell y'all what people are really scared of. You would like to know what people are really scared of because they're not scared of debt. Because age 40 to 55, the average debt is $140,000. People are not scared of debt. People are not scared of it. Let me tell you what people are scared of. So I can remember when I first, um, it's not failing because people fail every day. If you are not where you, if you're not where you want to be today, you failed yesterday. We fail every day. So it's not failing. So I remember when I first got into uh, entrepreneurship and my mentor at the time, Mr. John Malott, used to always tell me, he said, Will, 
the hardest thing for people to do is work. And Paul Letter just said it. The hardest thing for people to do is work. Because paying the debt is not is not hard when you have a plan to actually utilize the debt. We can't say we're scared of success. We can't say we're scared of failure. We can't say that we're fearful because we risk our lives every single day. In every single capacity. Every year we make New Year's resolution goals that, that we don't hit. You failed. Somebody is at a job right now that they've been for 30 years. And they still can't pay all their bills on time. It's the work that people are scared of. And here's why. Because. And, I, and I'm trying to say this in the most politically correct way. See, when we when we get a job. Most of the time, once you've been at that job for X amount of time. It really is on autopilot. I don't have to think. I just come in, press my computer keys or I just answer some phone calls or I just push papers. I read off this customer service script. If like I enter it, like when you really think about it, that's not work. Yeah, you're going to work every day, but it's not challenging you. So it's not work. But when you are in a position where now you have to pay back this two hundred thousand dollars for this business you've invested in. Or when you're wanting to learn how to buy real estate and you have to physically pick up the phone and you may have to call 25 banks to find out what bank is willing to do business with you. When you have to vet out 15 contractors because 10 of them don't, don't haven't returned a quote or returned your email. When you are looking to find a property management company that's willing to service properties in C and D neighbor cl C class neighborhoods. See, that's work. That's the part people aren't willing to do. They want to invest their money into something that can be mindless to where if 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 you don't help them right away or if they don't see a thousand percent return in 30 days, it doesn't work. So instead of actually fighting for something that we said we wanted, we said we wanted financial freedom. We said we wanted to be debt free. We said we wanted to, to, to do all of these things financially, but we continue to do the bipolar opposite to get the emotional feeling of, 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 of generating bad debt. Oh, so. So because. I'm having a hard time as a real estate investor. I'm just going to go and get my real estate license, which does nothing to help you as a real estate investor. So we go and continue to 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 put ourselves in these wheels that continue to trap us mentally. And then once you're trapped mentally, you're trapped financially. And then once you're trapped financially and mentally, you start operating out of desperation. And so you continue more retail therapy. This one blew my mind. The average income for someone with a bachelor's degree Is fifty to sixty four thousand. Someone with a master's degree is sixty five to seventy seven thousand. Someone with a doctorate degree is eighty to ninety seven thousand. I appreciate that realm of crypto. The average salary. For someone with a doctorate degree is 70 is, is 80 to 97,000. But the average doctorate degree is going to cost you 300,000. 
And then here's the trap. Here's the setup. So you have your doctorate degree. You're making 97,000 gross, which means you're probably only bringing home about 80. Because you're in a different tax bracket. So you're bringing home 80. But then off of that 80, you got to go get the half a million dollar house. Off of that 80, you have to get the big body Mercedes Benz where your, your car note is $2,000. See, you have to look the part of the doctor. See, my only goal is to teach you guys how to think differently, how to make better decisions, how to how to mathematically <laughs> never put yourself in a position of financial ruin. It's all mathematics. Once once I learned that I cracked the code, it's all mathematics. It's all mathematics. I know if I borrow 50,000 and it costs me $750, I just find something that's going to make me where I can at least service the debt and get a return on my money. But because people have no idea even what a return on investment should look like, we pass up opportunities, which is why people are poor passing over opportunities repeatedly because they don't know there are very few things that's going to give you a 5% guaranteed return on your money every month. It's fifth grade math, like Cuz said. Because if we get 50, but nobody has ever calculated the ROI to get that master's degree that is going to at best cost you $200,000 to come out making $70,000 a year. And that's that's gross. Which means you're probably bringing home about 59 to 60. But you are living a lifestyle off of 77. You're not scared of that debt, but you are scared of debt that can that has been proven to make you money. Once you learn that you will never work for money again, unless you choose to do so. Because I, I'm, I believe you should keep your job as long as you have to. So people are scared of the work they're scared of the responsibility. People would rather people would rather go and run up all of this debt from retail therapy and not have to work or find a strategy. People will continue to put themselves in financial ruin. But a, a plan that Will Roundtree did not make up, people who are a lot smarter and a lot more wealthier than me have proven it works. And that is debt. Debt is the only form of strategy that can take people who have come from nothing and put us in a position of abundance. Can you or anyone break it down? The vegan alchemist, I broke it down very simplistic how debt makes you money. Here we go again. If I borrow $50,000 and that $50,000 in my debt servicing is $750, I can go buy a property. And I'm not saying you can buy this property in any, just anywhere. But I can go buy a property, and this is a real scenario, that is going to pay me, let's say, $1,200 a month. So I take said $50,000, purchase property, it's paying me $1,200 a month, so I'm still making money at the end of debt, of servicing the debt. But see, here's why people have a hard time with that as well, outside of the work, is because they're using the, the, the money to finance a lifestyle to look like they're running a business. 
They're using their money to finance a lifestyle to make it look like they are a real estate investor. They're using their money to finance their style to look like they have a successful company. Or they're using that money and putting it in bad situations. So I have a lot of people who have bought real estate and the deal is a bad deal because the deal, the transaction was an emotional transaction. Oh, I'm buying this property because it's near the freeway. I'm buying this property because Amazon is in the backyard, but the house isn't profitable. Oh, I'm buying this. I'm buying. I'm, I'm going to start this cake book baking business. Because I like to book, bake cakes, but you have no you, you don't know how to run a business. So this is why people get caught up in these traps. And this is why people don't understand how to service the debt or calculate a ROI. It's really fifth grade math. I, show, I literally you can literally. And, and, and then here's the other thing, because people don't see the ROI in paying for information. Unless it comes with the emotional attachment of college. See, nobody ever looks at college is paying for information. But because there's an emotional attachment with that college paper, because nobody claps for you when you take a, 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 a nobody claps for you when you graduate REI 90, even though you just bought. Shout out to uh, my, 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 my client, Justin Isadora, who, who, who's about to be on his third investment property in less than six months. Shout out to my client, Cayman Kelly from XM Radio, who's bought uh, probably at five properties since July, all since learning these strategies and countless amount of others who I've helped directly, who've joined my REI 90 class or people who, who, who've just gotten coaching from me, who's been able to position their life differently. But we'll go and pay for college, get a degree that's going to cost us three hundred thousand dollars to come out to make ninety seven thousand a year. When I have mentees who make more than that and their investment was only for REI 90 and they have a, a portfolio that they can liquidate tax free. Like Martin said, we use debt to buy assets. See, people have a hard time seeing mentorship as a as a RO, as a, a, an investment. So even if I went and got debt. A portion of that investment is going to be into me to getting more information, which is intelligence, which is what makes you smarter. Not learning the names of every single president. <laughs> I've yet to find a job or a business that pays you well for knowing all of the presidents in order. If you find that, please let me know. Unless you have a business being a translator for the for the government. <laughs> like if you're going to be a translator and you start a business doing translation for the government, then yeah, it's going to make you some money. Think about it. It's an emotional attachment with 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 going in debt. The bad debt. There there's an attachment of feeling good to go in debt. This is why people are going to stay this is why people are going to continue to stay stuck financially and get mad at people who've cracked the code. John Knight said, wow, we had the game messed up. Thanks, bro. Yeah, but not to the fault of our own. This is why I have so much grace for people, because I understand this is what was taught to us. Put up, B-Wig. Brandon, can you hop on with me? It costs too much to be poor. Doc just said it. Being poor is expensive. <laughs> I would rather work hard. I would rather work really hard for the next five years. As opposed to being poor forever. Because it gets brutally more. Ex the older you get, the more expensive it gets. The older you get, the more expensive being poor is. Everything costs more the older you get. Think about that. Think about the psychology of that. 
And then what do we do? We go back to school to get another round of debt that didn't service us the first round, as opposed to getting a round of funding and using that debt to go and create income. We got the game backwards, y'all. And the only way we're going to get out of that is you have to change the way you think. You have to change the way you think. And when I say thinking differently, it's learning how to make better decisions. Not saying, oh, let me think positive. Because I know a lot of positive thinking people that are in a bad place financially because they're not making the right decisions. What up, B-Wig? What's happening, bro? Oh, man, I'm on one today. Yeah, that's what I, I logged in, man. I'm sitting here. Mom coming into town tomorrow. I'm sitting here cleaning up, and I was like, "Let me see who's watching." And I saw you. I was like, "Man, Will is back." Appreciate that, man. Sure. But no, just yeah. just just want to tap in with you, man. First, you know, uh, just appreciate everything you do, man, and and really just really getting people to understand the concept because people often say people are scared of debt, and I yeah. I dispel that myth because based upon the statistics. The average debt for Americans is ninety thousand dollars. Mm. So we're not people aren't scared of debt. It's just it's that people have an emotional attachment to bad debt. This is why they call it retail therapy. Mm. We never think about I can go and get debt that's going to make me money. Yeah, but they're scared of that because you got to work. Did you want to add anything to that, King? No, I, I say you, you taught me that right. I always tell people like. You the most slept on person on the internet, mm. you know, because I think I think because you're mild mannered, um, and a lot of people are flashy, you know. But I, I look at you like Tracy McGrady, right? <laughs> so you see T Mac, he in the Hall of Fame, right? But I remember T Mac was saying one time, people said T Mac, you don't play hard, like you you just look like you're not playing hard, like what's going on with you? But T Mac's scoring forty and fifty. He was like, I can't help that I make it look this easy. Like, mm. and, and, you know, so I think for you um, in this space, you're you're definitely like a T-Mac. You're a Hall of Famer. So I want to tell you that. I know that what you asked me. Appreciate that, man. I definitely want to tell you that. And yes, you brought that to my attention. Like a lot of my, like a lot of when I first came into some money, I started, um, I bought into a tax franchise and I came into a, a good chunk of money. And my first property that I got, I was paying cash. A lot of things I was doing um, in the beginning was paying cash. And, and I see where, you know, I'm still paying for those mistakes now, years later. So when you all, when you preach about going into debt to be wealthy, um, it just makes too much sense, especially if you have the strategy for people like yourself. Um, like I said, when it comes to you, I've never seen you say miss to a certain extent, right? Of course, you've had your ups and downs in your career when people know or they may not know. But now that you've been in your bag, you haven't missed with any information. Mm. Like you was one of the first coming out. Hey, if you got you got to jump in this two row, if you got to go in a little debt to get into it with your credit cards, whatever, this is how you do it. And you operated that. And I love about you. You're able to pivot and speak on other things. So I think um, what you're saying for sure, and it's something full of transparency that I'm looking to learn and looking to get more into because I've been so cast like, oh, I got to pay my money, um, not having all my stuff in order. Um, so, yeah, I, I love I love the message. No, I appreciate that, man. No, it definitely means a lot. And 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 often and somebody told me a long time or well, not a long time ago, like a few months ago, they was like, Will, do you realize half the people that is in this space got the game and information from you? Nobody was using terms like leveraging credit. Nobody was talking about pulling money from credit cards. Nobody was talking about this stuff, man. And so, and like you said, like, I think sometimes that because I'm not the flashiest and I'm not doing antics and I, I don't want to create a character of myself, that sometimes the message does get missed. And, 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 and I'm fine with that because this information is for those who do want to take key to it. So I appreciate that. And always uh, 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 just always, you know, rocking with me, man. So I appreciate that. And I want to say this. I see one of my one of my guys, one of my players, Icy Wins, enjoying it. I 
uh, win. Stay on this live because we're about to give some game. So win, um, the shout out win. He's the starting point guard for Harvard University, um, top twenty five, top twenty five ranked team in the nation. Starting point guard. Um, I want to say he leading them in scoring. I could be wrong with, but stay on this live, little bro. <laughs> stay on this live because we'll definitely about to get some game. Appreciate that, bro. Love you, man. Thank you. All right, man. Love. Peace, peace, peace. So y'all heard it from my man, my brother, B-Wig. Uh, and, and, and just more importantly, y'all, like my thing is, is that I know nobody is is giving us this level of information. I was I was talking with, I did a live last week and this king jumped in the comments and said, yo, everything he's saying is stuff that I paid tens of thousands of dollars in a mastermind to be a part of. And that's the thing. See, it doesn't take any flame away from my torch to come in like you guys, but you all have to do the work. I can't believe in you more than you believe in yourself. I can't make you get up and make 100 calls. I can't make you believe in, 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 your, in your goals and fantasies. I can't make you do the things that is going to take for you to see the results. No different than a personal trainer. He can hear your trainer can give you the, the, the best regimen, but after your workout and your ab workout and you go and eat a Big Mac, you're going to get the exact same results that you had before you hired the trainer. See, the Da Vinci code that I cracked, which I was one of the first on the internet teaching people this stuff is taking debt to make money. And I'm, I'm, I use the word debt on purpose. We're not scared of it because everybody's going into debt anyway for information, i.e. college. See, here's the thing we have to also realize, and I'm not taking anything away from college, but you guys do know that college is a business. Man, <laughs> college is a business. <laughs> they have marketing budgets in the millions to solicit. Think about it. They have a college recruiter. They, they recruit you to come to college. They have a marketing budget. And you can't discharge the debt. That's the scariest part. Because see, at least if I go and, 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 and get structured debt that is making me money and something happens, I could at least discharge that debt. It's called bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is asset protection. But we haven't been taught these strategies. We haven't been taught these concepts. We haven't been taught these definitions. We've been taught who can go and get the most amount of debt to try to get the best job and then go and get the, the, the best house, the biggest car, take the most extravagant vacations, eat at the fanciest restaurants. Meanwhile, we're just piled up a bunch of un, un, unstructured debt that made us no money. But we're scared to get a line of credit for a hundred thousand, fifty thousand, even thirty thousand. Let's 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 do the cost analysis of this as I wrap up because I got to get to the gym. I didn't go to the gym today. Let's do the cost analysis. OK. So. An average degree is going to cost you 50 to 100 K right off top. 50 to 100 K. That you've invested into you because college is a self investment. Will we all agree? College is a self investment. OK, and the average college degree that's that you're paying 50 to 100 K is going to get you a job that potentially is anywhere between 40 to 60 thousand. And we know those numbers don't add up once you add in the cost of living. Appreciate that. Uh, I think this is a Zara T-shirt. Somebody asked me the brand of the T-shirt. This is I think Zara. 
Now, I can go and get a line of credit for 50,000. Now, mind you, this interest is piling up every day that, that you took out from college. OK, not saying it's bad, but know what your ROI is. Now, I can go get a line of credit for 50,000. Or even get some credit cards. I can and let's just say it costs 10,000 for me to learn new information. So out of the 50,000, it costs me 10 to learn new information. I invest in a, in a program. I learn how to do real estate. I learn how to do Toro. I learn how to buy businesses, whatever that 10,000 costs you. And I use another 20,000 after I learn how to invest in, uh, after I learn the skill set, I use another 20,000 to, 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 to build my business. Setting up my LLC for marketing. I'm just throwing out some figures and numbers. But then within that 20,000 and then that 10,000, so you're 30,000 in, it's also going to teach me how to go out and get more money. So now that that 30,000 that you've invested is going to teach me how to go and get another 100,000. And then that 100,000 I'm only using to invest in something that is going to make me money immediately. So I'm using a portion of that 100 to buy a business that's doing uh uh, uh six figures already a year. I'm using that a portion of that hundred thousand to go buy some income producing uh, properties that is making money already. So now I have things that is making me money that allows me to service all of this debt immediately. And it's make. And on top of that, I'm now getting what's called appreciation, which th are all things that are going to be worth more money at the, down the line that I can borrow against to go and make more money. I can leverage it and put it in an IUL insurance policy. I can put it into another business. I can buy bigger pieces of real estate. I'm, I'm investing in all things that are building assets and that is constantly making me money. So I'm making uh, uh, 5,000 here a year. I'm making 20,000 here a year. And after the, after the, for, so let's just take the average college degree is going to take you, let's say four years. Can you imagine if you took that same concept and worked really hard four years learning how to leverage debt where your life could be? Because after the end of the four years of college, guess what? Most of that information is outdated. So now, now I have to go back. Meanwhile, four years into me building from the initial $50,000 of debt that I borrowed, I'm making money from month one. Please tell me which plan you would prefer to be on. So we can't keep saying we're scared of debt because we're getting into it every single day. With zero return on investment. See, this is why I started my uh, REI 90 program, because I wanted to teach people. The intangible portion of investing in real estate, I wanted to teach people why owning real estate will make you money forever. I have people who flip real estate who is very sick right now. They're hurting because you have to live flip to flip. Whereas people who I've been teaching how to buy and hold real estate, le leveraging debt. Makes money every month. And then here's the thing that we never look at. If shit hit the fan, I still own the property. If my credit goes bad, I still own the property. So I'm still making money. I'm still making money. Period. This is why I started my REI 90 program. I eliminate your guesswork. I teach you how to invest in real estate all from your cell phone. I show you how to leverage debt. I show you where to get the money from. I show you what insurance agents to you. I show you what a good deal looks like. I make it look like fifth grade math. So when 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 B. Wig said, people may look at me and say, Will, you make it look so easy because it is. We overcomplicate it as humans.
We're the reason our children have fear. Think about it. And I, I gave this analogy a while back. Imagine having a child and they're, they're getting ready to take their first steps in life. And on the way of them making their strides to walking towards you, they fall down. And then because they made, because what would seem to be a failure, they never walked again in their life. That's what adults do. They try something. They don't even really try it. They pretend to try it. It doesn't work out because they don't do it the right way. They get a, a piece of the information. They halfway doing it. They getting bad advice from people who not even in, 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 in the position to give them advice. And then they give up on everything. But then they'll go back to school. They'll go shopping. They'll go take more vacations. They'll go upgrade their vehicle. They'll get a bigger house and they'll do all of these things piling up debt. But then meanwhile, they will come in and get on the phone with my with myself or someone who's trying to help them and say, I am scared to take on credit. <laughs> they say credit is bad. You do know student loan debt is credit, right? <laughs> it's like you do know student loan debt is credit. It's, it's, it's really fascinating because we've we've we 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 come up with reasons to stay poor. It's like it's a game. Instead of who wants to be a millionaire, who wants to stay poor? There will probably be more contestants if that was a show. Because that's what we continue to teach to our children. We must break that cycle. We must break that cycle. If you're tired of that cycle, email my team, DM the word help. We have the plan. Half the Internet uses words that I introduced to the marketplace. You can go and see the link in my bio if you want to learn more about the programs. There's somebody right now on the Internet three degrees removed from me using the word leveraging credit. And they don't even know where that came from. It came from Will Roundtree. Nobody was talking like that before I was on the internet in 2016. Credit repair was still taboo in 2016. People didn't know what business credit was in 2016. I was doing this in 2008. I want anybody to go and, and, and go to the Nevada Secretary of State and look up the company. New Beginnings Credit Repair. And you will see. Because for one, <laughs> it failed horribly in 2008. I've been in it. I've been on this journey. And I've been and I, and I can't and I, and I decided to come back to give you all the game to give you all the information. Uh, see somebody join from YouTube. You can go and click the link in my bio or go to REI90.com. REI90.com, which stands for Real Estate Investing 90.com. Even if you just want to know where you are on this journey, DM me the word help and someone from my team will reach out to you. Fear of not putting in the work. So as we wrap up, hopefully you guys have learned something. You cannot go into 2023 saying you're scared of debt. If you have debt, you can't say you're scared of debt. If you got student loan debt, you can't say you're scared of debt. If you're driving a car that isn't making you any money, you can't say you're scared of debt. Yeah, if you have a question, you can ask the question in the chat, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram.
If you have debt, if you have credit card debt, you can't say you're scared of debt. You can't say you're scared of debt. Let's stop that. That's a cop out. That's something that we've created to make ourselves feel good to the bad decisions that you've already made over the course of your life. And I get it, guys. I was once there. I was once in the position where everything I did financially was tied to an emotional decision. I don't have debt, but I've never used credit cards. I need help. DM me the word help, queen, so we can have someone from the team reach out to you. I get it, guys. I failed 70% of the time. If you have not read my book, Full-Time CEO, I tell my story in this book. People think credit is king is good. To, this is actually, my, this is actually my, my favorite book right here because it really gives you perspective of, 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 of going through the bullshit and getting out of your own way, especially if you are looking to be an entrepreneur or a business person. If you pay bills, you're in debt. <laughs> For real. If you pay bills, you're in debt. You might as well learn how to make debt make money for you. I was once there. But here's the irony and why I say you have to learn how to think differently. Everything that transpired in my life that looked like a loss is the reason I'm here today. Let me say that again. Everything that transpired in my life that looked like a loss is the reason I'm here today. If I had not have taken those quote unquote losses, I would still be stuck financially. If I had not have taken those losses, I would still be trying to figure it out in life. See, this is the problem. Everybody's too busy trying to figure it out. What is it to figure out when the answers are in front of you? I'm on the bottom floor for thinking. Trying to figure something out does not ever change the situation. <laughs> This is why I say we have to learn how to think. And the only way we can think is to have data to make informed decisions. And I've given you guys all of the answers. I, I am the blueprint for why people are where they are today. As my brother B. Wig would say, get in your bag, Will. I am the blueprint. I made the blueprint for half of the people that's out here eating. And I'm not saying that in a malicious way. I'm saying it that when people say, what, what, what proof do you have? The proof is, is I have the blueprint. Whether you choose to take it or not, that's on you because I can't make you want better in life. Is it better to have one property per LLC or multiple properties in one LLC? That, that, that's up to you. And I would consult with your, your tax person. That's really going to boil down to taxes. For my people on YouTube. Um, go to my Instagram or uh, go in and to my website. You can see the website in the bio. My Instagram is at Mr. Will Roundtree, Mr. Will Roundtree. And send me the send me D, DM me the word help if you would like somebody from my team to reach out to you. If you need an asset paying your bills, you can find my book. You can find this book on Amazon. Also, there's an audio, audio version as well. All of my every last failure is the reason I'm here today. So why wouldn't you want to be that baby and fall down so you learn how to walk correctly? The only way your child learns how to walk correctly is by falling. That's the only way. That's the only reason I'm here is because I failed. And I wasn't scared to invest in myself. King David, what up, King? 
Peace, peace. What's up, family? Oh, man, I'm blessed, man. As always, man. You know, I, I'm on here listening to you and, um, you know, man, just, man, you already know I'm giving you that salute, man. Appreciate that, you man. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate yeah, that. Just, just want to salute you, man, for those that don't know. You know, this man taught me a lot, you know, to be where I'm at, so... Man, salute. No, I appreciate that, man. And I know you and I have shared uh, just some moments of where you came from and where you where, where your life is now. And I remember when, you know, you and your queen first came over, man. And I'm proud of, you know, what you what you guys have built and, and even just for you to start thinking differently. And I know that was one of the things that you kept saying is that you've learned how to think differently. Yeah, actual fact, actual fact. I mean, you look on my bookshelf right here, and now it's just, you know, I'm studying pages like, man, you know, to really, really get the essence of different things. I mean, even all the, all these books up here, you know, it's just, I got so many, like the mind, I'm realizing that, you know, your mind is it, like, whatever you do in life, it's like 20% skill and 80% mindset, you know what I'm saying? So if your mind's not on point, Man, no matter how much education and knowledge you got, you ain't going to be able to do nothing. Period. You know? Period. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. A lot of people don't realize that. And they will just constantly think, like, I'm sure people will buy your program or buy other people's program. And then they'll find an excuse or a reason why it didn't work out and they didn't succeed. When the actual fact is that it was this right here. They couldn't break through that, that barrier of fear. You know what I mean? And... Like, that's big. And that's what I realized, like, when I started moving a little bit, you know, to the next level, when I started propelling in life, it was like when I realized that right there, that, man, it's my mind that's holding me back. And when you break through that, and once you recognize that, that's a great thing, because now, now you can break through that and jump through them hurdles like it's nothing, you know? Man, so. I remember I did one of my very first speaking events in 2016. And I said, when you change the way you think, that's when you'll become successful. And mm. people think dick thinking is about being a motivated person or thinking positive. Those things mean nothing if you don't change how you think of your outcomes. And right. that's the part that people, I think, sometimes go over their head, which is why I talk so much about mindset. This book is really a mindset book. I just sprinkled in my story and talked about some of my failures, i.e. experiences I went through that helped me get through this. Because here's the, here's the thing. I had my best time when I was poor. And I'll tell you why. Because I knew it was temporary. And I knew I had to go through that. So I'm like, oh man, this is just one more obstacle. Once It's like when, it's like when you play Mario Brothers. You know you're going to have to fight the villain at the end. Yeah. To get to the next that's, level. That's, that's what being broke is. You're on the first level. Period. Like I, I said, like the stairs, like I'm at the bottom of the ladder or the bottom of the stairs, so it's nowhere to go it up. And that's real, because I'm the same way. Like when I was down bad, you know, it was like, well, there's nowhere to go it up. It can't get worse. Than can't this. get worse. So you actually have more motivation to, to push forward. Period. You know? Period. Man. <laughs> No, great, great dialogue, King, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate always just paying homage and, and, and everything that you're doing and, and, and keep 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 doing your thing. Man, I appreciate you, family, man. Stay Thank blessed. you. Stay blessed. Exactly. Salute. All right. Y'all make sure y'all follow my good brother, King David, uh, and make sure that y'all go and, uh, and, and, and build with him. And so as we're wrapping up, guys, um, somebody, okay, I got a couple more questions. Do you have a Centurion card? Uh, I don't. I don't. I have the black, the uh, the platinum, the Centurion. For me, the benefit of paying twenty five hundred dollars uh, annual fee, that 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 just doesn't justify because you get all pretty much all of the same perks with the platinum card. Uh, any other books you recommend? So, one of the things about recommending books is it always going to be depending on where you are in your life at that time. And so I've been reading, me personally, I've been reading a lot of books on, on the mind because 
as David said, it's levels to this, y'all. And the further you get on this process of life, you have to learn how to master dealing with people. Like, here's one thing I want y'all to realize. Can you imagine how difficult it could be for someone who's not mentally strong enough to deal with? First of all, the pressures of just life. Just follow me, guys. The pressures of life, the pressures of being an adult, the pressures of being uh, 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 running a business, then dealing with trolls, people calling me negative names, people saying I'm a scam artist, people saying like I have to deal with this every single day. Can you think about the, the mental damage that I have to fight every single day? This is why you I, I have to stay rooted in my quest of constantly building my mental muscle. This is why I know how to detach emotionally from people who I know don't know no better. When people get mad, they're only upset because of where they are in their life. It's, I already know it's not personal. I tell people all the time, you can say whatever you want about me. Because I know I never come in malice. People are just mad where they are in their life and they're looking for someone else to blame. So when, you, when I talk about you have to be mentally strong, you have to change the way you think. So it's, it's so much bigger than just being a positive, motivating person. You have to, you have to create a lifestyle out of thinking differently. See, the reason it's hard for some people to be around me is because my frequency is tuned to a, a station that they can't even tune into. It's like a dog whistle to their ears. When your frequency is turned up that high, it scares people. It scares people. And I'm okay with that. Because it's usually more peaceful <laughs> when you know how to tune that shit out. What's the worst mistake you've ever made with money? The worst mistake I've ever made. I would say one of my worst mistakes. Was is that I, I, I would say that a lot of the times when you first start making money, everything that you that you buy is all based upon emotions. So I was buying shit just to buy it. But from a business standpoint, my, 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 my worst mistake I made was buying, investing into a business just to make money. And I, I didn't have any type of strategy connected to that. So I, I've, I've had many different lessons. So I don't do stuff for money. I actually turn down more opportunities than I take because I don't have to do stuff for money. I actually do stuff because Will Roundtree wants to. And that's the thing I keep trying to tell people when people try to fight me on, well, uh, your program costs this and this and the third. Like somebody sent me a message the other day, say, well, why are you not do why are you not doing it for free? Because other communities do it for free. And I said, fam, let me let me let me clear something up for you. Actually, they don't. Other communities charge their their people and they charge them more. Most of my programs comparable to other people in other communities is 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 10 times more expensive. I actually give away more information than I charge. I've actually done REI 90 sessions and then went on live and gave a few of those strategies away. So like people can't say it's about the money cuz I know how to go and get some debt and go buy a house. <laughs> So, so that's the thing. I know, I can go buy. I can go to any bank in North America and get credit and go buy a house, go buy a business. I'm looking at a business right now. That's bringing in sixty six thousand dollars net every single month. So it's like we have to stop it 
And again, I, I understand a lot of the times people are mad, not at you, but they're mad at their situation. Man, we need the next episode with the credit dude plus Will Roundtree. I'm new to credit and debt management game. I want to learn as much as I can. Well, stay locked in. Make sure you reach out to my team. Uh, how many points can I raise my credit to? I could use 250 points. It depends. So your credit can only increase depending on what's on there that's holding it down. So if you got a lot of shit holding your credit down, adding trade lines isn't going to boost your score. See, contrary to all of these fake uh, 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 credit people that tell you to buy these trade lines, if that's not the thing affecting, if revolving credit is not affecting you, spending money to put trade lines on does not help your credit. But see, if I was like everybody else, I could have, I could have, I could probably make a hundred thousand a month selling trade lines if I wanted to. But we don't sell trade lines to people who it don't help. I know for a fact I could make a hundred thousand a month selling trade lines, but I know it doesn't help every situation. So to your question, you can't raise your score two hundred and fifty unless we know what's affecting it negatively. We have to address that. Let me see. If you were a true follower, people got bags in game from FICO Friday. Oh, man. So many people made so much money when I was doing FICO Friday. And I was doing that for free back when it was two people on my lives. And it was me and my other phone. So I was just talking to myself half the time. It's about the profile. Absolutely. Ant. So as we wrap up, because I got to get to the gym, y'all. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Can a repo be removed? Anything negative can be removed. It's just a matter of the process, the process. So let's stop using this BS talking about we're scared of debt. We're not. We go get in debt every single day, B, as, as, as you know, a famous line from, from Paid in Full, if you haven't seen that movie. Let's learn how to use debt to make us money. So with that being said, go to REI90, DM me the word help. 